I read the short story, The Tunnel, by Sarah Ellis. This story is about a 16-year-old boy named Kenton who is babysitting 6-year-old Elizabeth, who goes by Ib for short. Being your typical 16-year-old boy, Ken isn't really too thrilled when he has to play with Barbies every day of the summer, so one day he suggests to Ib that they go on an adventure. On their adventure, they stumble across a tunnel that Ken had a traumatic experience with as a child because he fears small spaces. Ib convinces Ken to let her go into the tunnel by herself, and Ken decides that he will meet her on the other side. When Ken gets to the other side, panic sets into his heart when he realizes that Ib is not there and she is not returning his calls. Ken now has to face his fear of claustrophobia, or he has to decide to stay outside the tunnel and wait for Ib. Ken faces his fear and goes into the tunnel to find Ib, and Ib tells Ken that girls were talking to him. Ken tells us that these same girls were talking to him when he was in the tunnel as a child. Both characters are very frightened, and they decide to return home. In the introduction of the story, we meet Ken, who is 16 years old. Ken also is the character that we receive the point of view from during the story. When Ken was 16, he never imagined himself babysitting in the summer. He thought he would do, be doing something much more exciting, such as planting trees, or at the very worst, sitting on a lifeguard chair. We also meet six-year-old Ib, the girl Ken is babysitting for, who insists that they want that they will play with Barbies. Ken would rather go on an adventure or a walk, so he suggests this to Ib, and off they go. In the rising action, we learn about Ken's past. This is a flashback of his childhood and a traumatic experience he had in this tunnel with his friends. He was in the tunnel and he was completely terrified because it was such a small space. On the adventure that Ken and Ib are on, they stumble across this very same tunnel. Ib manages to convince Ken to let her go in the tunnel, but Ken does not want to go in, so he decides he will meet her on the other side. The climax of the story is very intense, because when Ken arrives to the other side, Ib is nowhere to be found. He calls for her, but she does not answer. Panic sets in, and Ken has to decide what is more important, facing his fear of claustrophobia, or taking the chance and waiting for Ib to emerge from the tunnel. In the end, Ken decides that it's more important to make sure that Ib is alright, so he faces his fear and enters the tunnel. The following action of the story is when Ken finally finds Ib in the tunnel, playing with a leaf in the water. She tells Ken that she was playing with girls in the water, and the reader is still unsure of who these girls are. The reader infers that these girls are from the imagination of Ib, but Ken also tells us when he was a child, these same girls were also in the tunnel. The reader is left wondering who these girls actually are. In the resolution of the story, both characters are quite frightened about the events that have passed because Ken is scared of small spaces and he had to face his fear and it was also frightened by these girls so they decide to return home. We are introduced to only two different characters in the story. First we meet 16 year old Kenton who is babysitting 6 year old Ib. The story told us um, the story told us not very much about Kenton by using direct characterization. All we learned about him using direct characterization was that he was an energetic, motivated individual. We gather most of our thoughts about Kenton through indirect characterization. For example, we learn that he is very good with kids through indirect characterization as he is babysitting it for the whole entire summer. We also learn that he is good with kids because he is willing to do whatever she wants him to do, even play with Barbies. We also get the impression that he is a very caring individual because he faces his fears of claustrophobia to go and make sure that Ib is okay in the tunnel and that nothing bad happened to her. This shows us that he is a very responsible individual because he's putting his own fears behind him. The setting of the story starts at Ib's house at 8.15 on a sunny summer day. Ken goes over to her house and the babysitting begins. The second setting of this story is at the tunnel which Ken had a traumatic experience with as a child. The reader can assume that this is not set in the city, but in the country, as when they are on their adventure, it is 
it is described as being very grassy. In the city, there is not too much grassland. But in the country, grass seems to go on and on and on. There are a couple of different themes in this story. The first is the theme of fear, which revolves around Ken's fear of small spaces and how he has to get over his fear to ensure that it is safe in the tunnel. Ken was also fearful of the voices of the girls, which he heard in the tunnel as a child. This would explain why he wanted to get out of the tunnel so quickly after Ib explained to him that she heard these same girls speak to her in the tunnel. There is also another theme of imagination in this short story. This theme exists because both main characters speak of speaking to girls who are truly not there and who truly do not exist. And this is why this particular theme is created. The atmosphere cre created develops throughout the story. We begin with a joyful atmosphere in the, as the setting is described as being sunny and bright outside. This create, creates happiness in terms of mood because when the reader thinks of sun and brightness, cheerfulness tends to come to mind. By the author telling us that the sun is out in the morning, this also creates imagery as the reader can truly visualize a bright sunny morning. The atmosphere darkens as we get further into the story. Our first clue of it darkening is when Ken tells us that he peered into the darkness. I believe that the atmosphere darkens when Ken gets closer and closer to his fear of small spaces. The mood of suspense also sets in when Ken has to decide whether to go into the tunnel or to take his chances and wait for Ib to come out. The, this feeling of suspense leaves us when Ken tells us that he has to go in. Imagery is also created when Ken describes the tunnel of being empty. This creates an eerie mood as empty places are often quite alarming because you are all alone and quite frightened. There are quite a few interesting literary devices used in this short story. The first one is a metaphor found in the line, the board game Candyland, a favorite of Lauren's and previously commended by me as a sure method for turning the human brain into tofu. In this line, Ken is comparing his brain to tofu when he is forced to play the board game Candyland when he babysits. What I think is the most creative literary device throughout the whole entire short story is a hyperbole found in the line. Six, a six-year-old can run around for 72 hours straight, but a half block of walking and they suffer from life-threatening exhaustion. This is a very creative hyperbole as there are two, in fact, two hyperboles in one line. <clears throat> It is a hyperbole because he is implying that six-year-olds can run around for 72 hours straight, but they can't walk very far. This is an over-exaggeration, as although kids can run around for a long time without getting tired, 72 hours is just unrealistic. The second hyperbole found in this line is when he refers to kids su suffering from life-threatening exhaustion after they've been walking around. This is a major exaggeration because although kids might get very tired from walking around, they would not suffer from life-threatening exhaustion. This hyperbole is used to show that the child would become very tired from walking around. And this is why Ken describes the walk that him and Ib go on as an adventure. The short story of the tunnel has a theme of fear, which is represented by the symbol of the tunnel. The tunnel represents fear because when Ken was a child, he had a traumatic experience in a tunnel. And when he is 16 years old, he can't find Ib in this very same tunnel. tunnel. The tunnel represents fear for Ken because he is very claustrophobic. The tunnel, ironically enough, also represents overcoming your fears. This represents overcoming your fears because Ken had to make the executive decision to go into the tunnel to make sure Ib was safe and he had to conquer his fears to do so. Ib represents curiosity and living life to your fullest. Ib represents these two things because she does not let fear control her as she goes into the tunnel the tunnel without any, without even thinking that something bad could happen. This is part of being a six-year-old.
but it really shows the reader that she does not let fear control her and she can live her life to the fullest. The moral and metaphorical meaning in this story is to face your fears. Ken struggles with this fear of small spaces and he has to face his fears and make sure Ib is okay. When Ken tells us, I have to go in, the reader recognizes the moral of facing your fears as it is exactly what Ken is doing. <clears throat> the moral in the story is to make the reader feel about facing fears in their own life. We need to put, we need to remember that we can't let fears control our lives because it will prevent us from doing things that we will regret in the future. Overall, I really enjoyed reading the short story, The Tunnel. The Tunnel had an interesting dynamic as it started out, we didn't know about what the fears associated with the short story, but then by the end we learned of these fears and we also learned that conquering them was very important. This short story was also unlike other sh short stories because it had 